From our studio in Georgetown, this is the TV Delmarva Channel 14 News at 4. Good day, Delmarva. Reporter Rob Petrie here for TV Delmarva Channel 14 News. Straight ahead, Del Dot remains silent, refusing to acknowledge the issue with their toll system as hundreds of Delawareans continue to come forward who received false violations. We hear from more residents today who are speaking out. And the Lieutenant Governor's Challenge is searching for nominees who helped make Delaware a healthier state. These stories and more coming up, but weather first with Hunter Alton. Good Friday afternoon, Delmarva. Well, it is definitely nice to see some sunshine for a change this week. Temperatures not too, too bad out there. We're seeing some much milder conditions than we have been over the last couple of days. Taking a live look outside of North Ocean City, Maryland. We have the blue skies. We have a couple of those cumulus clouds out there, but we are watching out for the potential of some isolated showers to be developing. During the mid and later portions of this afternoon, temperatures right now 55 in North Ocean City. Take a look at some satellite and radar. You can see the increase in those cumulus clouds and as well as some rain showers are beginning to develop over towards the areas of Northern Virginia, right up against the Appalachian Mountains and now beginning to cross into the southern portions of Delmarva, just southwest of Exmoor, where we could be looking at a couple of showers, maybe even a few rumbles of thunder are not out of the question and just maybe the slight chance of seeing some very small hail with some of the stronger cells. Now let's have a look at those temperatures elsewhere on Delmarva at this hour. Inland locations are looking quite nice. Right now, 63 here in Georgetown, 64 for Salisbury, 61 in Pocomoke City, 61 as well for Easton and Dover, and 60 degrees right now for Centerville, Newark, and Wilmington. We are seeing some fairly dry conditions, at least here at the surface. Inland locations are seeing humidity values anywhere between about 30 and 40%. But definitely a lot more humid the closer you get to the Atlantic waters. Right now, 73% in Ocean City. Take a look at some sustained winds. Generally, anywhere from the southwest to about 7 to 10 miles per hour for the most part. But we are noticing some stronger wind gusts, especially in our inland locations. Currently gusting the 22 miles per hour here in Georgetown. 26 right now in Salisbury. 18 for Pocomoke City. 17 for Easton. 13 for Centerville and Dover. Now we do have the chance for those isolated showers and maybe even a few rumbles of thunder. But a fairly nice weekend is ahead and a major warm-up is in store for next week. I'll have all the details regarding your weekend forecast in just a little bit. Del Dot remains silent, refusing to acknowledge the issue with their toll system as hundreds of Delawareans come forward who received false violations. TV Delmarva News has been inundated with interview requests from dozens of residents across the state who received toll violations after traveling through the Biddles Corner Toll Plaza in Newcastle County. All of them had a working easy pass with active funds in their account. Now, following the publishing of our report on Thursday, our social media pages were flooded with hundreds of comments from Delawareans who received false toll violations, including Megan Brown of Newark, who has been dealing with this issue for at least the past year. She's now speaking out, demanding Del Dot do something to resolve the issue once and for all. It's probably been going on at least a year now, but I was just randomly getting um certain i was randomly getting these violations in the mail and i was like i know that i had my easy pass i know it was funded i know it was in my car and the one thing that stuck out to me is that i would go one way down to the beach and then come back and they would only send me a violation for one direction so obviously it shows that i have an easy pass i was working um so i just started getting them and initially i was just appealing them and i guess i never heard anything so i'm assuming it went through but um, it was time consuming to fill, to fill out the form, to have to fill everything out, to then waste a stamp, put it in the mail, everything. But most recently, I just got eight of them at one time in the mail from last summer too. So number one, I don't even remember the times going. And when, I add, when you add them up, they're asking for almost 800 to to $1,000. And when you add up what the toll should have been, it's like 20 bucks. So, it, and now I have to sit here and try to 
do these, appeal these all. Um, I've tried to do it online because it says you can, and I have no, I can't find anywhere online. So I guess my only option is to mail them all. <laughs> Kent County resident Matt Burge works in Newcastle County and has to take the toll through Biddle's Corner daily. He says, like so many others, he's received multiple violations when he had a working easy pass with active funds in his vehicle. Throughout the years, we would get a, a, you know, a fine and you mark on the thing, you know, hey, I've got a transponder and you send it back in and nothing's done. And that's what we were going to do this time. As a matter of fact, my wife was going to send it yesterday and never got around to it. But um, it, it, that shouldn't be an issue because my transponder is linked to a tag. And now we get, a, uh, we get uh, the money withdrawn into the Easy Pass account, I guess, monthly. You know, it, it constantly refills. Um, but my thing is, like, the, the 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 notice I just got was from two twenty one of twenty two, and I just got it two three weeks ago. Just do your job. Um, it, it's not that hard. Uh, you know, get the facts straight. Um, from what I've been told, they have people that cross reference the tag numbers with transponders. Well, if that's the case, then somebody on their job because I should have never gotten a a uh, fine. Because, like I said, I've, I've got two vehicles. They both have transponders. They're both linked to those tags. Um, our accounts, you know, filled automatically. Because, like I said, Now, we raised these concerns directly to Deldot's Community Relations Director, Charles McLeod, who refused to acknowledge the issue and repeatedly requested that everyone who raises these concerns contact customer service. Our interview request with the secretary was denied. TV Delmarva News is continuing to investigate this developing story. We will continue to bring you stories of Delawareans impacted by this issue until Deldot addresses it and resolves the problem. Well, we got a chance to sit down with Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, who has launched the annual Lieutenant Governor's Challenge in search of nominees who help make Delaware a healthier state. Lieutenant Governor's Challenge is really important, particularly as we come out of COVID and even prior, you know, where you hit it spot on, whether it's a individual, a workplace, uh, or a business that hasn't usually thought about healthcare, or it may be a faith-based setting, or an organization, an entity who would like to apply. And the Lieutenant Governor's Challenge 2.0 had originally started years back with Governor Carney with physical health, but we expanded it to include emotional well-being. And how important is that now coming particularly out of COVID? You know, higher anxiety, depression, working our way back into the workforce, kids at home, you know, it's been very incredibly hectic. And so the Lieutenant Governor's Challenge is a nice way to really uh, kind of recognize your work colleagues, maybe your boss, maybe you're the employer, the head of the corporation. We like to feature healthy lifestyles, changing food in the vending machine, perhaps offering healthy snacks, or maybe you're a gym owner and you're suddenly going to be teaching persons not only about their physical well being, but their mindfulness and offering new yoga classes. Again, it's all about simplistic, measurable outcomes. You can nominate a candidate for this year's awards at lieutenantgovernorschallenge.org. Nominations will be accepted until May 16th. Winners will be announced in October. Coming up, Denrec Supports Youth Environmental Summit is planned for Delaware High School students next week. More details straight ahead. Keep it here. Well, Denrec is supporting the third annual Delaware Youth Environmental Summit on Thursday, April 14th with sponsorship and a keynote address by Secretary Sean Garvin. The student-led conference will be held at the University of Delaware's Clayton Hall Conference Center in Newark and is offered free of charge with lunch included for Delaware high school students and educators who are advisors to school teams. Pre-registration is open through today at DelawareYes.org. Attendance is limited, however, in its third year. The summit was created by a coalition of representatives from educators at Delaware schools, nonprofit environmental organizations, and public agencies to provide the opportunity for teens to meet, learn, and share their ideas on environmental issues of concern here in Delaware. Well, it's looking like we could be in store for isolated thunderstorms tonight with cooler conditions, though, as we get a preview of your pinpoint weather forecast with Hunter Alton. 
We have plenty of sunny skies going into this afternoon, but we have to watch out for the chance of some isolated showers and maybe even a few rumbles of thunder going into this evening, some of which may contain some very small hail and the strongest of showers. More isolated chances of showers for Saturday afternoon with cooler temperatures, but a major warm-up is still on the way next week with temperatures near 80 degrees. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll have a look at your weekend forecast here on TV Delmarva Channel 14 News. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into the pinpoint forecast for the rest of the afternoon and evening hours tonight. We're going to be looking at some mostly cloudy skies, and we still may be dealing with an isolated thunderstorm here and there. Mostly just in the form of showers, but don't be surprised if you hear a couple rumbles of thunder too. That's because we have a lot of cold air aloft and with those warmer surface temperatures. But the surface temperatures during the overnight hours are going to be cooling off quite a bit. 44 to 47 degrees tonight with some light winds from the south at about 5 miles per hour. Take a look at Futurecast. Rest of the afternoon and evening hours into the day on Saturday. This is 5 o'clock this afternoon. We're starting to see some... Isolated showers beginning to develop here on Delmarva on the future cast. Temperatures in the lower 60s. It's once we get into around 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, future cast has been consistently showing some stronger areas of showers. Now, some of these showers could contain a few rumbles of thunder and with a very, very cold temperatures aloft in the middle portions of the atmosphere, as much as 15 below zero and some elevated instability. We could be looking at some of these stronger showers, may containing some very small pea-sized hail, almost similar to sleet. As we go into the evening hours, temperatures right near 50 degrees. Going into the midnight time period, we're going to be looking at showers being more isolated in nature. Temperatures are cooled off down into the upper 40s. 3 o'clock in the morning, the precipitation should pretty much be done across the region and we're going to be looking at decreasing clouds going into Saturday morning. Temperatures right around 44, 45 degrees here in central Delmarva. Waking up tomorrow morning, pretty much same similar ordeal. Partly sunny skies, temperatures in the mid and upper 40s. It's and then going into the afternoon hours on Saturday, we're still going to be looking at a mixture of some clouds and sunshine. And there might be a still a slight chance that we might see an isolated shower here and there, but that's more focused over towards areas of the Maryland Western Shore, right up against the Appalachian Mountains, with a noticeably cooler day too, only in the 50s. Take a look at the Saturday forecast overall. We got. Partly sunny skies and a very slight chance of showers, especially towards the mid-afternoon hours. Much cooler conditions too, 50 to 55 degrees across the region. And it's going to be a little bit breezy at times too from the west, between 10 to 15 miles per hour with this very, very large trough in place across the eastern half of the nation. And take a look at the allergy index for tomorrow. I know today is really, really bad. I've heard a lot from a lot of people today about how bad their allergies are, including my own self. But tomorrow, we get a little bit of a break, still fairly high in the medium-high category, 7.6 out of 12. And we're still dealing with that tree pollen, which is very common for the month of April, with your allergens for tomorrow, poplar, juniper, and maple. Now we're going to switch gears to take a look at the marine forecast for your Saturday. Beginning with the Atlantic, we got isolated showers. 54 degrees winds from the west at 10 to 20 miles per hour with seas of 2 to 4 feet. Take a look at the Delaware Bay. Isolated showers, 55 degrees winds from the west at 5 to 10 miles per hour with seas of less than 1 foot expected. And then the Chesapeake Bay. Isolated showers as well, 55 degrees winds from the west at 5 to 15 miles per hour with seas right around 1 foot. Now, going into the overnight hours tomorrow night, you're going to be done with the precipitation, mostly cloudy skies, and a fairly cooler night ahead too. Overnight lows, 38 to 44 degrees with some light winds calming down from the west, still continuing at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now let's take a look at that extended outlook because we got some good, good weather going into next week. Although it's going to be a little bit of a cooler weekend in store coming up with few degrees below average, but still we're going to be having plenty of sunshine by Sunday, but it's going to be rather breezy though with temperatures around 54 degrees. Start of the work week on Monday, we climb back up into the lower 60s with partly sunny skies, but take a look at Tuesday through Friday. 
multiple days with temperatures well into the 70s, maybe even a few 80s in some spots. But we will introduce some rain chances with a cold front moving through on Thursday with some scattered showers. Coming up, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson has been confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court. More details straight ahead. Don't go away. A bipartisan group of U.S. Senators have confirmed Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court, marking the first time in history an African-American female has served on the nation's highest court. Jackson was born in Washington, D.C., but grew up in Miami, Florida. She attended Harvard Law School and served as a law clerk and a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. Judge Jackson was confirmed by a vote of 53 in favor with 47 senators opposed. Three Republican senators crossed party lines and voted for her, including Senators Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. The Supreme Court is expected to hold on to conservative majority even with the addition of Judge Jackson. Whether classroom is sponsored by No Nonsense Office Machines, committed to providing quality products and services with over 15 years of experience here in Sussex County. Alright ladies and gentlemen, today's weather lesson we will be talking about the formation of hail. Hail is one of the most destructive types of severe weather while often overshadowed by tornadoes. Hail causes millions of dollars in damages each year here in the United States. Hailstones come in a variety of sizes and shapes and can cause large amounts of damage to property. Hail is found in many thunderstorms and often accompany storms that also produce strong winds and as well as tornadoes. Hailstones are a frozen form of precipitation that occurs when a thunderstorm's updraft lifts rain up into the freezing line in the atmosphere. When the hailstones become too heavy to be lifted by the updraft, they fall back down towards earth, towards the ground. Hail forms when a thunderstorm updraft lifts water droplets above the freezing line in the atmosphere, and the frozen water droplets then accretes to supercool water droplets or water vapor, which freezes once they come in contact with the frozen droplet. And this process causes the hailstones to grow in size. Hail is often confused with other types of freezing precipitation such as sleet, but sleet is found mainly during the cool seasons and does not occur in thunderstorms. Hail in comparison is only found in thunderstorms where updrafts and the thunderstorm forces raindrops further up into the atmosphere to freeze. Hail sizes can differ greatly from one storm to another depending on the strength of the storm's updraft. Stronger updrafts can create larger hailstones, which in turn causes more damage. This makes reporting the size of hail to the public a very, very important thing to do to make sure for public safety standards. Now, the good news is here on Delmarva, large hail in thunderstorms is not extremely common, unlike it is in the Midwest and Central Plains due to our low elevation. That means storms in our neck of the woods would have to be very intense to bring water droplets higher into the atmosphere to that freezing line, and it takes a lot more effort to achieve in these lower elevation zones. Well, that about does it for us today, Delmarva. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at TV Delmarva and on our website, tvdelmarva.com, for real-time news and weather updates. And while you're there, be sure to sign our petition calling on the major cable providers to carry TV Delmarva on their platforms so we can provide this kind of local programming to all of Delmarva. Until next time, I'm Rob Petrie reporting for TV Delmarva, Channel 14 News.